And so in the, over the course of that five, that last five years from 2015 to roughly late 2019, we saved a half a million, we saved and invested um, uh, over a half a million dollars during that time period. Uh, because we were so disciplined about our budgeting, we had sort of engineered our lifestyle to live on between thirty and forty thousand dollars a year. Investing for retirement takes time, patience, and consistency. Eventually, you'll reach a point where you don't need to contribute any more money to hit your retirement goals, and that's what we call Coast Fire. On our Coast Fire segment today, we're going to interview Brad Long from Atlanta. Brad and his wife, Angelica, hit this Coast Fire milestone recently. Today, we're going to learn how they accomplish this family financial goal and how this affects their journey going forward. Welcome to the show, Brad. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me, Andy. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being transparent with all of us to help us all win. So let's talk about your investing journey. When did you start investing, and initially, what, what got you motivated? Yeah, great question. So that's a big part of my larger story of getting out of $174,000 worth of debt first, You know, learning those basic blocking and tackling skills. Uh, and that was that started back in about 2004. I discovered Dave Ramsey's material and really you know, kind of shot my way through a lot of that. I was out of debt by May, completely out of debt by May of 2007, right before the the huge crash happened, and um, almost immediately, I, I you know I had filled my emergency fund, and I was like, all right, what do I do next? You know, and so that I had already started researching investments. I was looking at index funds and ETFs and you know traditional things like that. And so I pretty much started immediately after that. I, I hired a traditional, uh, at that point, I hired a traditional financial advisor. It was somebody that I'd known for a long time. And she sort of put me in a pretty conservative, you know, sort of posture with that. And I think I started with about $20,000 uh, that I had set apart from our emergency fund and, uh, and just started uh, growing from there. That's incredible. So at that point, um, you, what, what were you investing in, in that $20,000? Was that like a, a separate taxable brokerage or an IRA? How, how did you, how did you invest? Yeah, back in the, so this is back in 2008. So my memory might be slightly fuzzy. It was partially a brokerage account and partially a Roth IRA, uh, because you know, all of it was, I was maxing out, uh, you know, the Roth IRA and I was single back at that time. This is prior to Angelica and me meeting. So, uh, yeah, so partially a taxable brokers account and partially a Roth IRA at that point. The instruments that I was in were basically just mutual funds. And honestly, I wasn't nearly as, I didn't have as much acumen as I have now. I was really more in a posture in the early stages of sort of trusting her to put me in the right mutual funds. So I'm pretty sure they were all mutual funds. There may have been an index fund in there. Fund in there. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was mostly mutual funds. Got it, got it. So you've been investing pretty full on since 2007, and we're now in 2022. So we are, oh man, 15 years? <laughs> did I did I do that right? For about 15 years, you've been investing pretty hard. Is that right? Yep, absolutely. Okay, great. So when did you feel like you hit this Coast Fire milestone in, in your investing journey? Yeah, so Coast Fire came probably. So there's a little bit of a a little bit of a backstory with that. Um, you know, by the time Angelica and I had met in 2009, uh, and then we got married a couple years later. She's from Colombia, South America, so we had a little bit of a process in getting her, you know, here. And I, you know, was in a positive net worth, and and so once we got her here, I was sort of in a I was in more of a music career at that point. I was kind of a music contractor and I knew that, you know, I was going to need to pivot back into corporate America at some point, which I did in 2015, partially because although we were out of debt, we, we hadn't really grown our net worth all that much. I mean, by the time I went back into corporate America, our net worth was only about $70,000. I say only a lot of people I'm sure would be like, Oh, that's amazing. What do you mean only? Um, but you know, so we just weren't getting the traction. And I knew that I had this monetizable skill set of software sales from, you know, earlier incarnations of my career. And so I d we just decided sort of reluctantly to pull that lever so that, you know, we could really start investing more hardcore. So we had the basic, the basics of, of personal finance down. We had, you know, or we were highly organized. We were on a very, very strict budget. We were tracking our expenses. We were increasing our savings rate. We were doing all the right things. We just didn't have a big enough shovel to start uh, shoveling toward toward that. And so, in over the course of that five that last five years, from 2015 to roughly late 2019, 
we saved a half a million. We saved and invested um, uh, over a half a million dollars during that time period uh, because we were so disciplined about our budgeting. We had sort of engineered our lifestyle to live on between thirty and forty thousand dollars a year. And I, you know, I hate I hated being in corporate America. I wanted to get it over as quickly as possible. My wife hated to see me in corporate America because of the amount of stress. And so, yeah, we we reach. I, I think technically we reached Coast Five, probably somewhere in the middle of that, just based on our lifestyle, you know, goals and all that. But I would say definitely by the middle of November 2019, we felt like okay, we're at a place where we can just pivot out of this thing. I can, you know, get get out of corporate America and then dive into just doing, you know, what I'm doing now, which is, you know, helping people like like you help people. That's incredible. So you, before 2015, you were. Uh, an artist, you were doing music and maybe a little bit more of a relaxed lifestyle. Then in 2015, it sounds like you wanted to go hard, bring in the income to get your investing where it needs to be. And now in 2019, you you moved away from that to, to help people with their money like 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 we all are today. That's right. Exactly. That's that's 100 percent. Yeah. So we uh, so we yeah, we definitely looked at you know, I started this as a side hustle before then. So it was there was sort of the convergence of some um, some events that that really made sense for us to to make the jump. So yeah, that's incredible. So what what made you feel confident enough in 2019 to be like, hey, I'm going to leave that corporate career that's feels like it's a bit soul sucking and uh, and and go back to something that just makes me feel a little happier. Yeah, soul sucking, man. That is the operative word there. It definitely it had gotten to that point. I think that that was probably. One of the primary reasons is I just, I had reached a point of burnout that I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter how much they pay me. I literally said, if they pay me a million dollars next year, I can't do this anymore. And sort of, sort of simultaneously, I had built my, my financial coaching practice to a place uh, where I was coaching students one-to-one. I had developed a couple of digital courses. I had a membership site at that point. And so it really just made sense, and especially in in light of how much I hated it. So it was just the convergence, really, of those two things: burnout, uh, and I, I would say the third thing is we knew that we could constrain our lifestyle if we needed to, uh, even more. So burnout, you know, the online business, the business was going great, and then we knew we were very confident in our skills to live well within our means. And so those, th- I think, the convergence of those three things were. We're like, yeah, duh, this is a no brainer. Let's, you know, let's do this. Yeah. And in full transparency, you are, correct me if I'm wrong, you're not making as much money as you did in your corporate career, but you still felt the confidence to move along. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at that point, the the business was probably making, uh, I would say that was really about probably the end of year one and a half. Uh, and I, you know, we were making under $10,000 at that point, you know how it is when you're starting something. I mean, it takes a while, you know, so we're now in year three and we've generated about 50 K in, in revenue last year. So we're ramping back up to that, but we knew that, you know, it, because of our lifestyle, even if we had to live on savings, which, you know, once you're, once you're used to having a savings rate of between 70 and 80%, which we were over that five years, the thought, the thought of going backwards is just excruciating. So, uh, so there was a little bit of, you know, psychological suffering that, that, that we went through those first couple of years, but we just knew that, you know, at some point it becomes a mathematical certainty if you're really helping people and if you're doing certain types of ac- activities. So yeah, we, we were, we were ready. Well, I love that. And that's what I love about the concept of, of Coast Fire is that you've gotten yourself to a position where time and compound interest will take you to those retirement goals that you need. So let's talk a little bit about those numbers just to help people understand the concept a little bit more. You said that you had $500,000 invested. Is that where you are today? And then I guess, where do you project that to be when you are looking to say goodbye to traditional work, I guess? Since leaving uh, corporate America, um, you know, in November of 2019, you know, we have a mixture of asset classes. So we have traditional investments. We've got, you know, brokerage accounts. We've got uh, 401ks, 401k rollovers, Roth IRAs, uh, HSAs, all of the traditional type stuff. But then we also have this other portfolio, uh, two other portfolios of precious metals and then also cryptocurrencies. And so we've over the past, I would say, you know, four or five years, our cryptocurrency allocation was probably started off at about 10 percent, you know, back. I've been in the I've been in the space for about a decade now. 
and we initially started about 1% of our overall net worth back in those days and kind of ramped that up to about 10%. And that has since ballooned to over 50% of our, our net worth. And so we're, you know, depending on the day, of course, because the cryptocurrency market is very volatile, we're over a million at this point. Uh, so we've dipped below that a little bit over the past few weeks because there's been a dip in the market. But, you know, again, it's it's just one of those things where you just increase your acumen, you increase your comfort level with certain, you know, asset classes. We, you know, obviously we're very much into the uh, traditional markets, but we're also uh, into, you know, gold and silver as sort of central bank insurance as, as well. Uh, and then also, you know, several uh, different projects in the crypto space. So we feel very confident about the the portfolio that we have and, and we understand everything and how to move it and all those kinds of things. So I think that's the, the biggest part of that is that has given us that confidence to totally jump ship from corporate America and just do my own thing has just been a, a mixture of, of those different uh, strategies. That's great. So you're about half, call it traditional, and then another half in crypto that gets you the million? Yeah. Of course, because of you know emergencies and just what we've seen over the past couple of years, a large part of that is liquid cash as well. A large part of the traditional would be you know liquid cash. So a significant, maybe twenty percent of that is probably you know liquid. So, well, let's talk about just you know when you when you felt this moment in two thousand nineteen, where you're like, hey, we've got enough. We've got enough. How has that changed your financial journey going forward? Now you have now been working in your uh, business originally hobby turned side hustle turned full time business now for a couple of years. Do you see yourself doing this until you traditionally retire? That's a great question. I honestly don't see myself really ever retiring from this. I I, I feel like it. You know, for for my wife and me, it it brings us such you know such a sense of purpose, and there's such a joy in what we're doing, and we don't feel like we have to do. We're not part of hustle culture. Uh, you know, we produce content, we do, you know, YouTube live streams together. Uh, we have a membership where we really, really serve those people, um, you know, much more, um, I guess, granularly, I, you might say. And so I, I don't really see, I don't really look at traditional entire retirement uh, in a sense, because I don't really feel like I need to retire from anything. Now, there could come a time, you know, in, you know, 15, 20 years where, we say, okay, well, we want to cut back back pretty dramatically, or we grow the business to a place where we have, you know, some, you know, other personalities that are that are part of the team that are sort of carrying the load. Uh, but yeah, we don't really, I don't really see the whole sixty five, you know, and and quitting kind of thing because, I mean, I'll probably work until I drop. I mean, that's kind of the strategy anyway. But man, I love it. Well, it's 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 something to really enjoy what you do, so it doesn't feel like work. Every day, and it sounds like you, you've definitely found that. So somebody's listening right now, and they're saying, "Man, I want to hit that level of comfort from Coast Fire." Uh, what is one step that they could take after finishing this interview? Great question. Um, I think there are two. It's a two-part answer. One, if you're in a place where you've, you're in debt, obviously you want to get the basics of you know personal finance blocking and tackling done, organization, budgeting, expense tracking, so you know where your money is going. So that's that's one part of the answer. The other part of the answer is. If you're, you know, out of if you're out of consumer debt, and you're in the posture where you're like, hey, I want to, I want to invest, I want to increase my savings rate. I think it's just really about increasing your investment acumen. You know, looking at traditional markets and all the instruments inside of those traditional markets, like you know, uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. You know, understanding what all of those are, understanding the buckets that they sit in, uh, and then also looking at, you know, like I, we're big. Uh, we're big affirmers of uh, gold and silver as sort of insurance uh, for your portfolio, uh, but then also the cryptocurrency space because that's sort of a gateway into you know other instruments inside the cryptocurrency space like NFTs uh, and staking for you know higher le levels of interest and DAOs and all of those things that may sound like you know uh, a Russian to somebody that doesn't know what this is, but you know it, it's one of those things where there's a there's a barrier of entry, but once you get into the space. And start to understand it a little bit more. So the overarching theme, you know, part two of part two of your question is really just do everything you can to continue 
raising your financial acumen so that you understand these and feel comfortable putting some assets in there. I love that. And yeah, yeah, crypto was one of those things even just maybe a year or so ago that uh, I was I was publicly saying, ah, you know, I don't know. We'll see. You know, it's very interesting. Maybe I'm dipping my toes in the water, but I'm not doing too much. But it seems like more and more as the news pops out, more banks are investing in it, more large corporations are accepting it as payment. So it, maybe it's not, you know, 100% of your portfolio like you guys are, you guys we're, we're talking about today, but it's definitely something you want to learn more about, get your education on and maybe dip your toes in the water. So Brad, I really appreciate your time today. Where can people connect with you and learn more about what's going on with you? Yeah, thanks, Andy. So uh, two main places, our YouTube channel, which is uh, Brad Long hyphen zero debt coach. And then our website, zero debt coach.com. We push out a lot of content there and you can always feel free to reach out and say, hey. Excellent. Brad, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Andy. It's good to be here.